Okay, so let's let's go backwards then. Um, we know that there's almost 100 years worth of scientific evidence that dates back to the 1920s um, with, you know, J.P. Hemsworth and Indersing and um, um, Dr. Walter Kepner and beyond that have clearly demonstrated the power of a whole food plant-based diet. Um, why don't you give us some of the scientific evidence that you co- consistently cite and some of the scientific evidence that really sets the scientific stage um, for the consumption of a whole food plant-based diet and not only just managing disease processes, but reversing these disease processes, specifically diabetes. Well, if you'll allow me, I will tell people of a, a concise resource. Please. And that is if you go to YouTube and you look up McDougal and diabetes, you'll find an hour and 10 minute lecture where I presented all, all the data, all the basic research, all the science that I'm aware of. And, you know, I, I, I try and be fair. Uh, believe me, I'm happy to go up against the naysayers. And I have to know what they're trying to base their ideas on. You know, I have to know how they fooled themselves and are going to try and fool me. So I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I've been at this a long time. I'm pretty good as far as scientific research goes and remembering it and understanding it and categorizing it. And what the research shows is that, uh, is that uh, back in the 1920s, there's a fellow named Shirley Sweeney. He published an article on his medical students. You could do this again tomorrow at uh, you know at medical school, at University of Michigan. You get the same results. Well, he took his students, and he did a glucose tolerance test, which is a standard test that we used to use a lot. What you do is you give a dose of glucose, and you see what happens to the blood sugar over the next 30 minutes, 60 minutes. 120 minutes or so on. And it shows how high the blood sugar goes based upon this uh, this oral dose of glucose, a standard dose. When you prep people with a high sugar diet, and he did his medical students, he gave them candy and table sugar and syrup and you know all kinds of simple sugar foods. He prepped these students for two days. And then he did the glucose tolerance test on them and none of them tested diabetic took the same students a couple weeks later, put them on a high high oil diet, okay, olive oil, you know, pig fat, et cetera. And he did that for two days. That's all, just two days. And then did a glucose tolerance test on them, and they all tested diabetic. You know, in the ranges where the blood sugar, instead of being 100 to 150, the blood sugars were like 200 to 250. So we know back with her, Shirley Sweeney's work, Back in the 1920s, uh, we know that if you feed people fat, their blood sugars go up. And if they're diabetic, you feed them fat, they go up really a lot. And if you feed them sugar, I mean, like table sugar, their blood sugar sugars improve. It's not that I'm suggesting people eat table sugar. You know, I'm just giving that as a extreme example so that you know that the sugars and potatoes and rice and sweet potatoes and corn. These are these are just really good sugars. And that's what people have eaten. I just told you, 100 billion people walk this earth have lived on those starches. Anyway, uh, Shirley Sweeney's work was important. There's a fellow by the name of Rabinovich, a Canadian. <clears throat> it went around the world in uh, the ni- early 1940s, late 1930s, and he treated, just like you and I do, he treated... Uh, type 2 diabetics with a high-carbohydrate diet. And he reported on 500 of them. And he said out of the 500, there were like 10 failures. I think he said there were only five failures. And the rest of the people basically cured their type 2 diabetes. This was back when, you know, we're talking about 90 years ago, Rabinovich did this. Uh, anyway, there's a uh, right. Hurt right. Well, Hemsworth is the father of diabetes. He yep. proved it in his studies in the 1940s. And, you know, every time you do the research, you get the same results. You know, it, that's because it's true. And so, you know, if anybody questions, well, why don't you have more modern studies? What do you, what do you expect to have changed? And nothing got to change. They did the basic work. You know, it's all there. You know, you, if, it wasn't, if it wasn't true, then why haven't you done the studies that show we're wrong? You know, I've got in, 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 in gray and white, black and white faded paper. 
that, that says this is true. If I take your medical students at University of Illinois Medical School and I put them on a diet of sugar for two days, if they started out as normal people, they're going to test non-diabetic. If I put them on fat for two days, they're going to test diabetic. Always has been, always will be. Nothing's going to change. Anyway, there's uh, been a, a lot of pioneers out there that have uh, that have treated diabetes, and you know I, I'd be one of them. But uh, James Anderson, Nathan Pritigan, Walter Kempner, you know some of the people who've really, really cared for people and put them on a diet. And the results, I'll just be real simple and real straightforward and really able to back it up. The results are as 100% of type 2 diabetics can be cured with weight loss. And the easiest way to lose weight is with a diet that I teach, a starch-based diet. There are no fat people living on starches. Think about it. How many overweight Asians do you see? Do you have in mind? I know a lot lately, but I mean, you know, traditional Asians. 